This is a series of four tutorials on setting up and solving transient balances. Uh, we're going to uh, do these four example problems. We'll just start with this one uh, first of all. This will be the first of four. But we'll have other videos um, following that also include uh, species, energy balances, another mass balance, and then another species balance as well. Okay, but we're just going to start with this first one um, as a first example. And we'll show this uh, an analytic solution, but also a numeric solution as well. So we have a storage tank that is uh, two meters in diameter, or radius equals uh, one meter. Um, it's being filled at a rate of two meters uh, cubed per minute when the height of the uh, liquid is two meters in the tank. Okay, so this is our this is our height. The bottom of the tank springs a leak. The rate of the leak is proportional to the head of the fluid. So it's leaking at a rate of 0.4 h meters cubed per minute. So if the height is 2 meters, um, then it's going to be leaking at 0.8 meters cubed per minute. Um, so we want to plot the height of the liquid as a function of time, and what is the steady state height of the fluid in the tank? Okay, so we'll first of all um, set up the balance for this. dm dt equals m dot in minus m dot out. Okay, the mass flow rate in minus mass flow rate out. If we assume a constant density, um, okay, m dot is just going to be equal to the volume, the volumetric flow rate times a density. Okay, and I'm going to plug both of these in um, to come up with uh, this in terms of volume. Okay, volumetric flow rate in density times volumetric flow rate out. The densities are going to cancel. Okay, and then uh, I know that my volume is going to be equal to pi r squared times the height. That's just the volume of a cylinder. Um, and um, then I also know that my volumetric flow rate in is going to be 2 meters cubed uh, per minute. And my volumetric flow rate out is going to be 0 0.4 times h. Okay, so plugging all of that in, I get pi r squared times dh dt. Okay, the radius and pi are going to be constants. And then that equals 2 minus 0 0.4 times h. So now we want to solve this with four different methods. Um, a first method that we're going to use is just separate and integrate. Okay, um, so to do that, um, let's just go with uh, method uh, number one. Okay, so to separate and integrate, um, I'm just going to bring all of my time variables onto one side and all my height variables onto the other side, and then integrate. Okay, so I'm going to have dh divided by 2 minus 0.4h. It's going to go on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side, um, actually I'll, I'll multiply by my pi r squared there as well. Leave that on that side, um, and then on my right-hand side, I'll have uh, time. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and integrate that uh, from 0 to t, and then from 2 to a final height. Okay, and when I do that, um, you're just remembering the uh, integral correlation dx over two, uh, a plus bx is going to be equal to 1 over b times the natural log of a plus bx. Okay, so using that correlation, um, we find that it is going to be 1 over um, negative 1 over 0 0.4 um, natural log of 1.2 over 2 minus 0 0.4h. Okay, and that's going to be equal to 1 over pi times t. Okay, or I can put the pi over here as well. Okay, so there's, uh, and if I just solve for h, then uh, h with a little bit of math is going to be 5 minus 3 e to the minus 0 0.4 times t over pi. Okay, so that's just rearranging that equation. So let's use um, Laplace transforms as well. Uh, that's also going to be an analytic um, or exact solution. Okay, so if I use um, Laplace transforms, I'm going to start with my same balance equation, which is going to be pi r squared dh dt 
equals 2 minus 0 0.4H. Okay, so now I've got to look up in the Laplace tables for um, for these different these different elements. So let me go to some Laplace tables and see if I can find. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to find Laplace tables here. Let me go over here instead, and there are some Laplace transforms. Okay, so I'm actually going to need um, this one, the unit step, just for the, my constant. Okay, I'll go ahead and import it back into um, here. Let me add a page, and I'll just go ahead and insert that. Okay, so I can write on it. Um, okay, so here is a Laplace transform table. Here it is in the time domain. There's it is in the Laplace domain. We're going to need this one. Okay, the unit step. Um, all right, and then we're also going to need the derivative as well. Okay, so here's a derivative uh, to transform it um, from the the DHDT into the Laplace domain. Okay, and then um, let's see, the other one is just um, the variable itself, okay, which I'm just going to transfer it from um, H of T into capital H of S. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. Um, with my Laplace. Okay, so now I just have pi r squared, and then I'm going to have s times h of s minus um, h naught, and that's going to be equal to uh, a value of 2. Okay, and then that is going to be equal to 2 minus um, 2 over s uh, minus 0 0.4. Uh, times h of s. Okay, so now I have this in the Laplace domain, and uh, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and collect the h terms on the left-hand side. Okay, so that's going to be pi r squared. Um, now my r value is just equal to 1 in this case. I'll just, uh, r squared is going to be equal to 1. Uh, so that's going to be um, pi times s h of s um, minus 2, okay, so that's going to be um, minus 2 is going to be equal to 2s minus 0 0.4 h of s. Okay, I'm going to bring this over to that side. I'll bring that over to that side. Um, and then that is going to give me um, pi times s plus uh, 0 0.4 okay and then uh, okay that's actually just going to be pi times s and then I have the 0 0.4 that came on to that side and then that's going to be multiplied by h of s and that is going to be 2 over s um, plus 2 pi Okay, so I've got this uh, separated, and then h of s equals 2 over s times pi s plus 0 0.4. Okay, and then I also have 2 pi over pi s plus 0 0.4. So I've got this split into two. I can separate. You now these are already separated out. Now I want to go back into the time domain now that I've um, collected all of these. So let's go back to our, our Laplace tables again. And it looks like I'm going to need um, this one right here. Go back into the time domain. And then I'll need this one as well. And I'll go back into the time domain right there. OK, so just looking up in the Laplace tables again. Um, and that gives me an answer of um, that's going to be 5 times 1 minus e to the negative 0 0.4 t over pi. Okay, I just had to divide uh, numerator and denominator by uh, 0 0.4 before I did that. Um, okay, and then uh, plus 2 times e to the negative 0 0.4 t over pi. So that gives me 
5 minus 3e to the negative 0 0.4 t over pi. Okay, so that's a second solution. And you'll see that um, these two, separate and integrate and Laplace transform, they gave me the same answer. Okay, so now um, a third way to do this is just going to be with something called Euler's method. Okay, very basic numerical integration, but what we'll do is we'll start with just the differential equation that we had before. Okay, and dh dt equals 2 minus 0 0.4 h. Okay, and then what we're going to do is um, we'll start with um, essentially an um, initial condition, which is, which is 2. Okay, and then at a, a second time point, we'll just have a delta time, and we want to solve for what is the, um, the value at this, um, at the second point. Okay, and what we're going to do is approximate this dh dt with just a finite difference approximation. So this is going to be my h1, h2. This is t2, and that's going to be t1. And so uh, approximation of my slope, or dh dt, is then just going to be dh dt is approximately h2 minus h1 over t2 minus t1, or it's going to be h2 minus h1 over delta t. Okay, and then I'm going to plug that back in here and then solve for h2. So that's going to be pi r squared h2 minus h1 over delta t equals 2 minus 0 0.4 h and then I'm going to use a value of h1 in that case. Okay, so when I solve for this, so this is going to be multiplied by uh, delta t and then divided by pi r squared and then add h1. So this is going to be equal to h2. Okay, so I can set this up in Excel and um, just use, you know, if I go to h3, then it's just going to be h3 minus h2 divided by t3 minus t2. And basically use that in Excel to solve for, um, solve for this. Okay, so let me go to, to example one. Okay, so I've set this up, um, the numerical solution. And so you can see I just uh, put in the equation that we just derived. Okay, and then I also put in the analytic solution that we had come up with from, um, you know, the five minus three times this quantity. That's the, uh, the point four there. Okay, so comparing the analytic and uh, numerical solution uh, for these two. Now, you can see if I increase Okay, increase the delta time that the air is going to um, increase as well. Okay, now you can see there's some difference there between the numerical and the analytic solution. I'm going to go ahead and change that to four seconds now. And it starts to get a little bit more granular. You can see that there's more uh, separation there as the derivative is not as good of an approximation. If I go to eight, um, and then uh, I'm going to go to 12, for example, now I, I see that it really starts to deviate um, quite a bit, and it can even go unstable. Okay, so that's going to go unstable. Let's find out where the uh, approximate stability limit is for Euler's method. Okay, so a little bit down. Let me keep going down. Okay, so that's about uh, the stability limit, and beyond that, it's going to continue to grow. Okay, so this is Euler's method. Okay, so a final um, method is going to be with um, using MATLAB. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this up. Um, we're just going to set up a time derivative, a time derivative method. Okay, so we have uh, an equation here. Um, that was our original equation. We didn't have to solve it. Um, we had our a variable just with an initial condition equal to 2, and then pi and r defined as well. 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is also define some time points. Um, we can do this in Excel, just put a time column with some of the time points that we're interested in seeing the solution at. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up um, this MATLAB code that then will run this model and this data file. Okay, so this data file is going to take, uh, is going to solve uh, this model at every time point in the horizon. And it's going to be like an Euler's method, but it's going to be more accurate than Euler's method. So we don't have to use as many time points uh, to get the accuracy that we need. Okay, so here in the MATLAB script, I'm going to do, um, just go ahead and clear my session with clear all, close all, and then CLC clears the screen. I'm going to, uh, this is the numerical solution, um, where I first of all just an add a path uh, to my APM folder, and, um, and then I'm going to solve it um, just by solving the, the model and uh, feeding in the data as well, and then I just retrieve the solution. Okay, and then I'm going to plot that um, right here with the line width 2. That's going to be my red line. I also have an analytic solution uh, from solving the equation as well. This was um, the analytic solution that we got from Laplace transforms, but also uh, from separate and integrate methods. Okay, so we're just going to compare these two. If you need this folder, um, you can get that. Um, you know, just go to apmonitor.com and go to the MATLAB interface and right here um, on the download APM MATLAB libraries you can download this okay and then um, once it finishes downloading you'll get a this zipped archive um, of files and um, so let me go ahead and save that open it um, you just need to copy this folder okay the APM folder Go ahead and copy that um, into our working directory. Okay, so you can see it's already there, but if I copy that um, same one in, then I'm ready to run. Okay, so let me go ahead and run this script now, and, um, and then we'll just see the answer from the numeric and the analytic solutions for, um, for this tank. Okay, so here is um, here's the answer and you can see that um, we took a little bit larger steps in the Euler's method but using a numeric integrator we're going to get much better answers in this case it's the AP monitor uh, modeling language and integration package okay so that was this uh, first tutorial so I'm just going to go back here this um, we did then a fourth method which was um, uh, MATLAB um, and using the AP uh, monitor modeling language to then solve the same equation. So we started with just pi r squared dh dt equals 2 minus 0 0.4 h and then just solve that. So a little bit more accurate um, than something like an Euler's method. Um, and uh, you know, definitely for large-scale systems, we will want to use um, integrators to solve it. Okay, so so analytic solutions. It's really good when we can, you know, compute an analytic solution. Um, you know, especially for simple systems, one or two variables. The one that's going to be most applicable for large-scale systems is going to be, you know, these numeric integrators uh, that we're going to work with.